This is a 31-year-old female patient with two single-tooth gaps in the maxilla. On the right side, the single-tooth gap was caused by a congenitally missing second premolar, whereas the gap in the front was caused by a dental trauma with tooth avulsion. The panoramic radiograph shows the original status with the baby tooth in the second premolar site still in place and the single tooth gap in the front. The periapical radiograph shows sufficient bone height and a normal bone structure in the implant site. The surgery is initiated in the right maxilla with a mid-crestal incision using a 15C blade. The incision is extended into the sulcus with a 12B blade. Tissue elevation is begun with the small Hugh Freedy instrument in the papillary region. The paddle-shaped end is used for the palatal flap. As a result, two small mucoperiosteal flaps have been raised without relieving incisions. The flaps are held in place with retraction sutures. The crest is sufficiently broad for the placement of a wide body implant. The crest is smoothened with a four millimeter round burr rotated counterclockwise under copious cooling with chilled saline. The preparation of the implant bed is again initiated with the first round burr to mark the implant position. The mark is widened with the second round burr. Preparation continues with the first pilot drill turning at about 500 to 600 RPMs. The appropriate implant position is checked using the depth gauge with a 5 millimeter ring. The bone preparation is further widened with the third round burr before the 2.8 millimeter pilot drill is utilized to a sink depth of about 12 millimeters. The correct dimensions are checked with the depth gauge. The next drill is the first profile drill. It makes the opening of the bony bed even wider. Bone preparation continues with the 3.5 millimeter twist drill to the same sink depth. The correct sink depth is again checked with the 3.5 millimeter depth gauge. The wide alveolar crest allows a 10 millimeter long wide body implant to be placed. In consequence, the large profile drill has to be used to further widen the entrance of the implant bed before the 4.2 millimeter twist drill can be utilized to complete the bone preparation. The 10 millimeter wide body implant is taken from its sterile ampoule and inserted at slow speed. In this case, no pre-tapping is necessary due to a rather spongy bone structure at the recipient site. The implant is inserted to a sink depth of approximately 11 millimeters and achieves good primary stability. Using the holding key, the insertion device can easily be removed by rotating it counterclockwise. In this case, a 3 mm titanium healing cap is selected for a non-submerged approach, since the implant site is located in the second premolar area. The thread of the healing cap is covered with a 0.2% chlorhexidin gel. The two wound margins are adapted. A small rotational flap is created to improve the precise soft tissue adaptation on the distal buccal aspect. The small flap is prepared with a 12B blade 
and rotate it into the approximal aspect. The small flaps are fixed with two interrupted sutures. Fine 5-0 monofilament suture material is used. After 20 minutes, the first surgery is completed, allowing an implant restoration to follow in six weeks. The second implant site is a single tooth gap caused by trauma. The radiograph reveals sufficient bone height and a normal bone structure. The clinical status shows the single tooth gap with a slight buccal flattening. The incision is made with a 15C blade on the palatal aspect about 3 millimeters from the mid crest. Then a 12B blade is used to extend the incision through the sulcus to the buccal aspect. The papillae are carefully loosened with the Hugh Freedy instrument. Equal care is taken to elevate the mucoperiosteal flap using the paddle-shaped end of the instrument. Due to the buccal concavity, soft tissue grafting is planned to improve the soft tissue contours. Therefore, distal line angle relieving incisions are made with a 15C blade. Following elevation of the full flap, retraction sutures are used. An amalgam tattoo on the periosteal surface is removed, also with a 15C blade. The intrasurgical site analysis demonstrates no disturbances from the nasal palatal canal and shows a crest width of at least 6 millimeters, sufficient for a standard implant placement without bone grafting. The perio probe indicates no major buccal atrophy allowing a standard Straumann implant to be placed in an appropriate position. As the next step, the 4 mm round burr is used in a counterclockwise direction for a bone scalloping procedure to flatten the crest slightly without touching the interproximal bone. The buccal mirror view perfectly demonstrates the scalloping of the alveolar crest. The scalloping imitates the natural architecture of the bone around the adjacent teeth. The measurement of the crest width with a caliper shows a sufficient width of more than six millimeters. With the scalloping procedure, bone preparation is easy and can be started from a flat bone surface. The first round burr marks the approximate position of the future implant. The mark is widened with the second round burr, followed by the first pilot drill. A sink depth of about 14 millimeters allows a 12 millimeter aesthetic plus implant to be inserted. The depth gauge with the 5 mm ring is inserted to check the implant position mesiodistally and orofacially. The implant position is appropriate in both directions. The mark is widened with the third round burr. Bone preparation continues with the second pilot drill that is kept fully cooled with a chilled saline solution.
the bone opening is widened with the first profile drill. Followed by the twist drill, again to a sink depth of 14 millimeters. The 3.5 millimeter depth gauge confirms the appropriate implant axis. A 12 millimeter aesthetic plus screw implant is inserted to a sink depth of about 14 millimeters. The implant achieves excellent primary stability. After using the holding key, the insertion device is removed. The site analysis demonstrates an excellent implant position in all three dimensions. In the mesiodistal and orofacial direction, the implant shoulder is positioned in the so-called comfort zones. The buccal view in the mirror clearly shows that the implant is also well positioned in the coronoapical direction. The implant shoulder is located approximately one millimeter apical to the cemento enamel junction of the adjacent contralateral tooth. A two millimeter healing cap with a buccal bevel is utilized in this situation. A 0.2 percent chlorhexidine gel is applied to the healing cap. The bevel is adjusted to the buccal aspect to avoid a sharp corner that could create a soft tissue problem. Finally, the healing cap is stabilized with a hand screwdriver. The soft tissue flap is readapted. It's clear that the buccal concavity should be corrected with a soft tissue graft to achieve aesthetic soft tissue contours. Therefore, an incision of the periosteum is made to release the flap in a coronal direction. Following a palatal anesthesia, the harvesting of a soft tissue graft is initiated with the incisions. Since the mucosa is rather thin, it's decided to harvest a combined full thickness, partial thickness graft. Two divergent vertical incisions are made with a number 11 blade followed by two horizontal incisions about three millimeters apart. Then a mucosal flap is prepared with a 12B blade, keeping the superficial flap rather thin. The graft is mobilized with the Hugh Freedy periosteal instrument and finally dissected with a number 11 blade. The graft is prepared. The thin epithelial layer of the full thickness portion is carefully removed with a blade. The soft tissue graft is placed into position and attached with a mattress suture to the full thickness flap. This will not only improve the stability of the graft, but will also help establish intimate contact between the graft and the vascularized flap. For this, a resorbable 5-0 vicral suture is used. The released flap allows a tension-free adaptation of the flap in a more coronal position. The wound is closed with two interrupted sutures consisting of fine non-resorbable 5-0 suture material. The two sutures are not tightened too much so as to avoid blanching the mucosa. The implant healing cap is almost completely covered by the mucosa, allowing submerged healing for six weeks. The vertical relieving incisions are closed with 6-0 sutures, promoting a rather quick soft tissue healing within a few days. 
the interrupted sutures have at least a distance of two to three millimeters between each other. The final view shows the surgical sites following wound closure. The existing partial denture is adapted and hollowed out to avoid pre-contact with the mucosa. The post-surgical radiograph confirms the correct implant placement in the second premolar area without perforation of the maxillary sinus. The clinical slide again shows the original status of the single tooth gap in the front region. Six weeks following the implant placement, the soft tissues are nicely healed. The occlusal view demonstrates the clinical situation prior to the reopening procedure with a punch biopsy. The implant is slightly exposed on the palatal aspect, helping to make a punch procedure of the mucosa easier. The clinical status following second stage surgery with a punch biopsy to gain access to the osseointegrated implant. The occlusal view shows the newly inserted 3 mm titanium healing cap located slightly below the papillae, whereas the periapical radiograph illustrates the implant with normal peri-implant bone structures. The clinical view at the six-year follow-up examination demonstrates a pleasing aesthetic result of the ceramal metal crown. The mid-facial soft tissue margin is stable, resulting in a harmoniously scalloped gingival margin. In the posterior maxilla, the implant-supported premolar crown also demonstrates a satisfactory aesthetic treatment outcome. The lip view of the speaking patient shows that the implant-supported crowns are well integrated in the maxilla. The six-year follow-up radiograph demonstrates stable peri-implant bone crest levels for both implants and good fidelity between the restorations and the implant shoulder. The peri-implant bone has reached a steady state situation with increasing bone density in the crestal region.